Okay, uh, let's do the check and uh, start the Board of Adjustments meeting. It's currently um, 6.30 p.m. on July 13th, um, as authorized by Section 551.071 of the State of Texas Code. Uh, this meeting may be converted into a closed executive session for the purpose of seeking confidential legal information with the City Attorney um, on the agenda. Uh, we're not going to have any closed meeting for that this evening. Uh, the City of Roulette uh, Board uh, reserves the rights to reconvene uh, or re uh, realign to a regular session or call an executive session in order to in order for business at any time prior to adjournment. Uh, we don't anticipate that tonight. Okay, for the people in the room or at home, um, the process for public input, uh, if you're not able to attend in person, you may complete the citizen's input form for the city's, web, the city's website by 3.30 on the day of the meeting. All forms will be forwarded to the Board of Adjustment prior to start the meeting. Okay. For persons in, uh, for personal comments, uh, registration forms and instructions are available on the inside of the door from the first came in at the chambers. Okay. I guess number one, I'll call, officially call it the order, call the meeting to order. Okay. Item two, uh, citizens input. If anybody in the audience wishes to speak to the uh, board, we cannot respond back to during the board meeting. But we have a three minute limit. Uh, if you fill out a form with uh, Susan earlier, uh, I see no forms this evening. So we can move on to the next item then. The next item is to consider the approval of the minutes from the Board of Adjustment meeting for May 11th, 2022. Um, have any uh, motions from the board members after reviewing the, the minutes? A motion to approve the minutes. A okay, motion to approve by Jim. I'll second. Second by Chris. A vote. Okay, we accept the uh, minutes as written. Thank you. Item four, um, basically is to conduct a, uh, actually 4A, is to conduct a public hearing, uh, take action requested by Marcel, I can't pronounce the name, I apologize, for sign and design of a variance of the section 77-512 in the Development Code for wall exceeding the permitted 60 square feet of subject property at 3410 Main Street. Um, so you have something to present? So a bit of background on, on this uh, property and this request. Uh, this property is located at the southwest corner of Rowlett Road and Main Street. It is zoned within the, R the uh, C2 district, uh, intended to accommodate retail sales along high volume streets uh, such as Rowlett Road. The uh, residential structure on the property has been renovated and converted recently for use as a restaurant. Uh, within the Rowlett Development Code in Section Table 5.12-1 within Section 512, is uh, the chart that sets forth the various sign types and regulations permitted within the city of Rowlett. Um, the particular sign in question is a wall sign, which is a detached sign, which has uh, the allowable maximum area of the greater of 10% of the facade area of which it is placed, or 60 feet. So the applicant is requesting a variance to section 77.512 to increase that maximum area uh, for a sign located on the accessory structure on the subject property, of which on the right-hand side of the slide we show that accessory structure uh, before the sign was installed and then with the sign installed uh, on, on that structure. Um, again, placement of the signage of any sub, uh, signage on that converted residential structure would be out of character for such a, such a building, um, as well as would diminish the uh, restored historic farm tech architect, farmhouse architecture. Uh, the applicant property owner did um, identify the accessory structure as an alternative location for signage uh, to advertise and identify the business. The installed sign does have an area of 150 square feet, which is larger than what is permitted by the RDC. A variance is appropriate in unique uh, uh, circumstances uh, to allow for exceptions uh, to 
uh, various things such as setbacks, a lot more than depth, and uh, other numerical things such as the sign um, area. Um, it would not be granted based upon market conditions, economic factors, probability, marketability. Uh, should not be granted. A variance should not be granted if it's contrary to public interest. And also make sure it is to be granted that it does uh, meet the spirit of the regulations uh, and also provides for substantial justice. Uh, this sign would be uh, 90 feet larger than what is the allowed maximum. However, this uh, approval of this request would allow for the owner to keep the proposed sign um, as installed. Um, the way of notification for, for this item this evening, uh, there were 15 notices sent out to properties within 200 feet. And with uh, that, we did receive, after the packet was published, we did receive one notice uh, response in favor. And then within the 500 foot notice, uh, radius, we sent out 34 notices and we received uh, no responses. Staff recommendation is approval for this variance request to increase the maximum wall sign area for the sign on the accessory structure to 150 square feet. Um, the constraints associated with that designing appropriate attached signage uh, for that architecturally significant residential structure should be taken into consideration in this, in this matter. Granting this variance to increase the maximum signage on this alternative location is a reasonable allowance. We also note that an affirmative vote of 75% of the board, or four votes out of five, would be required to decide in favor of the applicant to grant the variance for the Texas local government code. And with that, I would entertain questions that the board may have. Great job. Do we have any questions? This, so any, any action taken by the board does not technically set precedent um, for, for um, any for future cases going on. It is decided based upon uh, the specifics, characteristics of, of the property um, and um, with, with that. Um, so there, in the way of uh, having to, I guess, defend the decision, it, it would again be taking the, char the, the character of the architecture of the property um, that Again, if it's a business property built as a commercial uh, building, there are opportunities for signage. That is kind of where the, the crux, I believe, of our um, argument and our recommendation lies upon being this being a um, historical residential home, uh, of which placing signage on it just really is out of character um, for, for that. So each case does rely upon its, its own merits. Um, I, I would say in the most delicate way possible, of course, uh, every time there is variance that is granted, um, it does make our jobs a little bit more difficult in, in the way that somebody can point out, but I saw it here or it was allowed here. Then it comes down to explaining the process for how these decisions are made um, and offering up that opportunity for that particular uh, applicant property owner to again pursue the variance process. So ultimately, it would come to, to this board again. We would be the one taking the uh, exactly yes, exactly. This this does not make a change to the city ordinance. Okay. Only for this property. Right, thank you. Yes. Do you have a comment? I think well, we had worked with this property in the past on setbacks. So I'm glad to see the building is still there, not the that, that that office building. That is correct. That is um, correct. And I think that metal structure in the back once had a big sign on it for Mr. T's lawn or uh, mowing services in the past. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's not unusual that the building was painted with some graphics on it. Um, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. At, at this point, I guess we need to open for a public hearing. And even when the audience was to speak, or, sir, are you uh, with the property? No, I'm, I'm sorry. 
So the uh, person requesting is not here this evening. No one else in the audience wishes to speak. Okay, and I guess we close the public hearing now at uh, 645.